Hey everyone and welcome to the Work Smarter Not Harder Dojo with me, Tony Harmer, aka The Design Ninja, and this is the place where you can develop your ninja skills with all of your favourite Creative Cloud desktop and mobile apps. In this movie, we're going to kind of revisit something from a shuriken skill a few weeks back, and that's to create a ribbon graph like so, a ribbon chart that goes around a corner. And a question I've been asked is, can you do that with live data? And of course, the answer is yes. So I'm going to show you how to build a graph just like this. So what I'm going to do is just copy this range of things here because I actually want to use uh, those colors and I'm going to create a new document using the same profile with the shortcut alt command n that would be alt control n uh, to create a new one based on the previous document. I'm just going to paste that down I'm just going to come along to my swatches, make sure that all of those colors are in there, which I think they are. But let me just see if I can do uh, add selected colors and see if it brings me anything else. No, that's pretty much it. The only other thing I've got there is the gradient, and I might just save that because it's really useful. And this gradient just runs from black at 0% opacity to black at about 60% opacity and that's what creates the illusion there of some depth so let's go about building this then you're going to need a few things essentially rectangles so if I draw a rectangle like so okay and then I'm just going to hold down the alt or option key with shift to keep it aligned remember you can also use the smart guides as well to create a duplicate of that and then just command D or control D to repeat that transformation. Then I'm just going to apply some colors to those. So I'm just going to drag those on from the swatches panel. So I think I'll start with the orange at the top. I'll go to the light blue, similar arrangement to what I had, in fact, with the graphic that I pasted. So those things on like so. Just to make doubly, doubly sure that they're all aligned with no gaps, because that's kind of important here, I'm going to select all four of them click on one to make it a key object and then from the align panel which you can access in current versions of illustrator via the properties panel like so and of course from the window menu in earlier versions i'm going to set the distribution of spacing here to zero points and then just click this vertically distribute space and if anything is outside of that zero points then it moves it into place Okay, let me zoom back out to the whole document and I'll just park that on the side. We can use that in just a little while. And in fact, I'm going to draw another rectangle now. I'll just draw a rectangle like so. That's going to be sort of an equivalent width of the bars on the chart. And I'll come back to that in just a second. Just move that out of the way like so. So it's a good idea to have uh, the kind of dimensions of the chart uh, first of all so what I'm going to do is tap J on my keyboard to access the column graph tool I can then long press in the toolbox and I want the bar graph tool like so now I'm going to zoom out a little way here and I'm going to start off artboard at the moment I'm going to start down the bottom here okay and then drag out to the size that I'd like my graph to be like so. Then we'll put some data into that. So let's just start here with something like 300 and then I'll tab across to the next field and put 450 in there. Tab to the next field, I think I'll do 575 dot there. And on the last one, I'll do something strange. I'll do 600.8 on there there you go so I've got a decimal in there as well hit the tick to apply that and there you go there is the graph drawn now I'll close the data window for a moment and then I can use uh, these bars of course to determine the approximate size for my rectangle and you can see that I'm just moving that around uh, like so okay rotating it getting the depth of it right and then spinning that back around. Okay, so it's vertical like that. 
Now, if you don't know how to do those things, you need to watch some more shuriken skills and that will get you uh, up and running with doing this very, very quickly. Now, my smart guides are on. You can tell that because you can see the little magenta uh, guys that are just popping up telling me that different things are around. I'm going to tap P to get the pen tool. And then when the smart guide aligns to the top and center of this rectangle, I'm just going to click to add a point and then hold down my shift key and tap my up arrow a few times just to turn this into a really nice sort of pointer shape like so. Perfect. Okay, now I've done that, what I tend to do is fill these with a grey, but it doesn't really matter uh, what you do with it. You can do whatever you want. It's just my practice, uh, the way that I do this to build these things out. So I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to get the line tool. So tap backslash on your keyboard to access that. And then somewhere down towards the bottom here, I'm going to click and drag, holding down shift to constrain it from one side to the other of that rectangle. And then I'm going to use the shortcut Command-5, that's Control-5 on Windows, to turn that into a guide. Okay, so you can see there's the guide, like so. Now my guides need to be unlocked, and if you go to the View menu and down to Guides, you can see that Lock Guides is available there. That means that they are already unlocked. You could also try moving the guide, and if it moves, then you know they're unlocked, and that needs to happen just for the moment. Next, I'm going to get the Type tool. Just click somewhere up here. Let me just scroll over this value just to change the size like so in my placeholder text. I'm not going to bother messing around uh, with the typeface or anything for this example. Let's just get this thing done. So I'm going to type a percent sign at the beginning. OK, and then I'm going to type at zero there, which means Illustrator will fill in whatever numbers are necessary. And then a two or a three. OK. I'll do a two just there. And that tells it how many decimals to have. OK, brilliant. Now I'm going to just rotate that around through 90 degrees. Holding down shift is a good idea uh, when you're doing this. Let's bring that into place just about there. Change the color of that. I think I'll make that actually white on top there like so. And if you need to, just nudge it around with the arrow keys or drag it around into place until you're happy. OK, so select those things together. Right, so all of those things there. Go up to the object menu and then all the way down to the bottom. OK, and choose design from there. And the graph design window opens. And what you'll need to do is to click on new design. Now, if you're happy with the name new design, then leave it as is. But if you want to rename it, and I do because new design isn't terribly helpful, I'm just going to call it pointy. There we are, like so. Then it's named and you can hit OK. What we can do now is move the graph into place. So I kind of want to move this so that it's on OK, the edge of the artboard like so. OK, and let me just take that. Uh, series, the category series off the bottom of the artboard there like so. Okay, and we're going to do some work now on the graph. So the ideal tool to use when you're working with graphs is the group selection tool. It lives underneath the direct selection tool. And you'll see that if I click on one of these uh, category access markers, it selects that one. But if I click again, then it selects the whole lot in the group and I'm just going to take away the stroke for those things. Similarly with the category itself it's going to click once then just click again okay and I'm going to remove uh, the fill for those. Now because the fill is in front I can just hit the slash key to take that away like so. And then I could drag across these two uh, lines just here. Let's take away uh, the stroke for those and I've got some value axis uh, markers here as well, or at least one. Uh, so I'm going to target that and get rid of it like that. Done. So they're all there. The graph will still draw them. It just won't give them 
any visual attributes at all. And similarly on these blocks, if I click once and then click again, okay, I can remove the stroke from there also. And that's how the group selection tool works. It allows you to drill into uh, different hierarchies. And because groups are hierarchical, it's the perfect tool to use for that. So next then, if I select the graph, what we can do is go up to the object menu all the way down to the bottom to graph. There's enough room Adobe, by the way, on the top here, yeah, to fit a little graph menu in there. <laughs> but anyway, so if we go to graph and let's go to column, okay, because these are columns, they're just kind of sitting around on their side. I'm gonna choose pointy like so. And then I'm going to choose sliding. And what that does is it allows the graph to expand in the region of that guide. That's why it's really important. Now, if I hit OK, you can see that all of those, OK, are now nice and pointy. The values on the end, exactly where I put it in the marker. All right. And they are stretching. Then what I can do is get the group selection tool again and click on these. OK, tap I to get my eyedropper tool and change the color of the first one. Then I'm going to hold down command. That would be control on the PC. Click on the next one, choose the color flat. OK, and so on throughout the whole graph. OK, so there we are. Perfect. Now, unfortunately, when you're using a column marker like this and you change the data, which is what I'm going to do now, select the graph, right click and choose data. OK, you'd actually have to do that step again. So what I'm going to do here is change this last value to 620, just arbitrary number that I just conjured up, 0.87. That was the point. I wanted to add two decimal places there and hit apply. And now you can see that's changed. Now, I should have really backed that off a little bit or changed the alignment. If you can see what's happened there, if I click on this text, you can see that it's left aligned. That wasn't terribly intelligent because it means the text is going to grow out towards uh, the right hand side. OK, so if what I should do here is make it right aligned and then it will grow back towards the left. But that's fine. I'm just going to undo the change that I made there. But anyway, you need to do those things. OK, perfect. So now we've got that. How do we go about making the ribbon effect well first of all we need to close up the gaps here on the graph so if i right click on the graph and choose type okay what i can do is come down here to the options okay i'm going to make the cluster width here i'm going to leave that at 80 percent. so that means these things this cluster of data will take up 80 percent of the total graph area inside the two axes there I'm going to change the bar width, okay, to 100%, like so. And when I hit OK, you'll see that now they all group together like that. Again, what I need to do here is just tap I to get my eyedropper tool, okay. I'm going to hold down Command or Control, click on the first one. You might need to click away uh, first of all, or even use the uh, group selection tool or direct selection tool, and then work through that. Okay, so you might need to do that. I tend also to turn these things into graphic styles because then you can just drag the graphic style on to the actual marker from this window. OK, and the main advantage of that is if you need to change the color and you're using the color other places in your infographic, which you are very, very likely to do. Yeah. Then any change to that definition OK, changes across here. And it's really easy to make one. Simply drag one in. OK, rename it if you want to. OK, and then, of course, if you need to change it to override it, OK, just drag the new thing on, holding down Alt or Option, and you can see how that changes that definition. OK, I'll undo that a couple of times because I don't actually need those for this example. What I do need, though, are these rectangles here. So I'm just going to group those together. So now, now one thing, I'll bring them down to the bottom left of the chart that's important because the zero kind of needs to be whoops a daisy the zero needs to be uh, the same as um, this they also need to be at the front so I'll just bring them to the front okay the zero needs to be the same place okay 
for your data to be accurate. So it needs to be on the left hand side just there. You can't align them because the chart actually starts over here. And then just drag this up, okay, like so. So get that to match the top and bottom there, like that, okay. And once you've got that done, all you need to do is to transform this. And there's a number of different ways that you could do that. But if I just tap E on my keyboard to get the free transform tool here, you can see that I've got some options, including perspective distortion. And if I click that and go for these back handles, right, I could just drag that out like so to change that. So there you are, you've got the bend in the ribbon just there. And all we need to do now, apart from bringing these a little bit further onto the actual artboard there, there we go. All we need to do now is keep that group selected, hold down Command or Control on Windows and hit the slash key. That adds you a new fill that exists over and above the group. And then just change that fill to a gradient Okay, like the one we saw at the beginning of the movie, which is 0% black on the left, okay, and about 60% black on the right. You don't want to overdo it. In fact, you might even want to model that still further. I think that's a bit harsh. So if I drop that down to about 40%, there you go. That's much, much smoother. But it's easy to make those changes. And the great thing is here, that remains completely dynamic so you don't have to rebuild the whole thing when you need to change the data and that's it we're done for now don't forget to subscribe to the channel reach out to me either here in the comments or via twitter or my facebook page you'll see those details in just a moment please do spread the word it really helps keep on watching and until next time see ya